welcome back and today we have a really cool project to tackle with the Centurion but I've been running pretty much flat out for about three weeks straight now and um, I think it's starting to show a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I think it's time for a little human maintenance. Uh, so I'm gonna go deal with this whole situation and uh, I'll be right back. So fresh and so clean, clean. I feel like a different person. I probably look like a different person too. And well, if you miss the beard, don't worry. I'm exceptionally lazy. It'll be back. Uh, but the real topic is what are we gonna do with the Centurion? And actually we're not doing anything with this Centurion. You see, I have a bit of a problem. Coming up in just about two weeks, there is a uh, local meetup here in Dallas and uh, they asked me if I wouldn't mind talking uh, for about 30 minutes on something. And I was like, yeah, man, I know a ton about the Centurion. I would love to talk about the Centurion. I said, that would be great. But I don't have any visual material to take with me. I don't really have a slide projector and that would be boring anyways. And really I should be taking this with me, but, but this is not going anywhere. The chassis is uh, not extremely overbuilt. The uh, Hawk drive alone weighs 130 pounds. So I gotta come up with a better solution, a mobile Centurion. One that I can throw into the car, drive up to, some meet up somewhere, pull it out and let people experience the Centurion and play with it and see what it's like. Now, I do wanna keep it mostly period correct. So I'm kind of avoiding uh, emulators that uh, use like a modern flash card or anything like that, with the exception of the power supply. I am gonna go modern with the power supply simply so I don't throw out my back. But the uh, main computer, I think we're gonna use the real Centurion cards. And for the drive, we're going to use one eight inch floppy drive. Now in the future, we're gonna work towards actually getting a hard drive in there because a full height five and a quarter inch hard drive was not uncommon in the early 1980s. As a matter of fact, Centurion actually supported the CDC RIN, but that was a five and a quarter full uh, height hard drive. And so that's something that Centurion supported. That's something that our operating system supported. And that's something that we're gonna work towards in the future. But like I said, I only have two weeks before the retro computing meetup. So we gotta build something with what we have right now that we know works. And that happens to be an eight inch floppy. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try and build a case to hold an original card cage, an eight inch floppy, and a front panel. In the next episode, we're gonna plug it all together, spin it up, try to get our operating system set up correctly, and get it working for the next event. So, uh, well, I'm burning daylight sitting here talking, so let's get to work. I wanna get the card cage from the counterfeit machine out as well as an eight inch floppy drive. These are going to be our main pieces. Everything else is going to be built around these two. So we'll start by grabbing some scrap plywood and then we'll place the card cage on top of it to start visualizing where everything is going to go. And uh, just like the real Centurion, we're going to need some wood trim pieces that go vertically along the sides. And this looks good, but we're going miniature with this whole build, so I'm gonna make this a little skinnier. And so I'll just give it a quick measure and then rip it on the table saw. And uh, once I set those back up next to it, yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. I think that's gonna work. Uh, but our scrap plywood baseboard, we need to shorten it up. So I'm gonna use the trim piece as a uh, measure tool here, measure it, and then head back on over to the table saw and uh, rip off the excess. And now we need to start working on how to attach the card cage to the baseboard. The card cage is going to be slightly elevated so that cables can pass underneath it. So I need to cut up some small blocks to mount an L bracket too. And I'm going to pre-drill the holes on this so I don't split the wood and I'll just tighten this screw down and I split the wood anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, moving on, I'll tighten down the L brackets uh, and then I'll set the card cage in place and it's a little 
finicky because I made it almost too much of a tight fit. Uh, but once it's in place, I'll lock it down with some M6 bolts and nuts. Uh, and then next, it's time to start thinking about how to mount the drive. Uh, and so we're gonna put the drive on its own dedicated drive tray that sits on top of the card cage. And so I'm trying to visualize how all of the L brackets that are going to hold everything are going to mount to this drive tray. And I think we have a pretty good plan going on here. So we'll start by getting the side trim pieces mounted to the base plate by mounting some L brackets to them. And then to tie it all together, I'm gonna to run some smaller L brackets further up that mount the side trim pieces to the drive tray. The drive tray is also going to hold the brackets for the upper card cage mounting bolts. And so I'm just going to cinch those down and with those tight, it's time to move on to mounting the drive itself. I want to make sure that the front of the drive is flush with the side pieces. So I'm gonna use my little straight edge here to confirm that. And then I'm going to make some brackets from aluminum. So first I'm going to drill a little mounting hole in it. Then I'll take it over to the metal brake and bend it. And uh, once I screw it in place, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's gonna work really nicely. The uh, side trim pieces can now be shortened to the same height as the drive. And once those are shortened, that lets me start working on the front panel, which is going to sit at an angle just like the real Centurion. But I'll actually use the front panel from the counterfeit machine as a template, since I've already got the uh, PCB removed from it. I'm just gonna clamp it down, mark out the holes with a pencil, and uh, once I remove the piece, look at that, we've got a nice little drill guide. And so I'm gonna go through and drill out all the holes for all the LEDs to poke through but uh, I'm making a pretty big mistake here and I'm drilling without a sacrificial layer beneath the board. This actually breaks apart the other side and leaves very rough edges. And so I'm trying to salvage it by sanding, uh, but ultimately it's totally moot because I misaligned the holes anyway and the PCB actually sticks out above the wood. So it's time to do it all over again. Uh, this time I'm gonna do it with a sacrificial board underneath and that's gonna leave a much cleaner hole on the front side. And then I'll screw in some standoffs so that the push buttons have a place to be mounted. And then with the PCB mounted, uh, yeah, that's, that's looking pretty good. Now I just gotta mount it to the rest of the chassis. And to do that, I made up some more aluminum brackets that'll hold it at a proper angle. And yeah, that's really coming together. All that's missing are the side panels, the filler panels, and the top panel. And so we'll start with the side panels and I'm just gonna rip these really big pieces out of more scrap plywood that we had laying around. And then those side panels will mount to the base plate on the bottom with three screws. And then they'll also be held onto the drive tray with an L bracket on the inside. And our uh, little computer cube is definitely coming together. So let's make the filler panels next, which fit in right beside the drive. So I took a few measurements and then I chopped them up on the radial arm saw and uh, mounted them in place with more L brackets. And you can see how that really closes up the front and starts to tie the whole thing together. Next, just like the real Centurion, I want the top piece to appear floating. So we'll measure up some inset pieces and then I'll chop them to size and screw them in place with about a one inch gap. And then it's time to set the top panel on and uh, yeah, I cut it to the wrong size. Um, <laughs> I did the whole measure twice, cut once thing, but I, I measured the wrong thing. Whoops. <laughs> All right, I've only got one piece of scrap plywood left that's big enough, so I better make it count. And after measuring three times this time, uh, we'll set it up there and whew, yeah, that looks perfect. That one worked out. And uh, so we'll go ahead and mount the top piece to the side pieces. And we're gonna do that with, you guessed it, more L brackets. Uh, and with all those screwed in, here is our completed computer cube. It looks absolutely fantastic. And I think it is a great homage to the real deal, but 
of course it looks a little trashy now because it's in dire need of paint. So everything came apart again to get a serious sanding and then it's time to start applying some paint and we'll start with a nice stain for the top piece, side trim pieces, and all of the internal pieces that aren't really supposed to be seen that much. After that, we're gonna put a nice coat of blue on the front panel as well as the two filler panels. And finally, the side panels get a nice coat of white. While those were drying, I busied myself with cleaning up the card cage and then mounting the back plane to the card cage, but I, I messed this up. The back plane is actually supposed to be mounted to the other side of those mounting bars. So uh, I'll have to redo all this later once I finally notice that I got it wrong. But after letting everything dry for a full day, I think we can start final assembly. So we'll get the baseboard up here and then we'll set the card cage on top of it again and it's still fiddly, that hasn't changed. But once it's in place, we'll run some bolts through the bottom mounting holes and tighten that on down. And then we'll get the newly stained side trim pieces in place with their L brackets. Next, we'll drop the finished drive tray in place and get all the brackets mounted to it, which lets us bolt the top of the card cage in place and then we'll screw the filler panels in place while the drive is out so I have easy access to all of the screws. And then we'll drop in the floppy drive and with the floppy drive in place, we can then screw in our freshly painted blue front panel. And finally, we'll start on the top. We're gonna get the brackets in place and get the side panels mounted to the top panel. And then the two side panels and top panel are now a single unit and it slides right into place and it takes a little bit of work to get it to slip fully into place. But once it is, yeah, yeah, that, that definitely looks excellent. Uh, so let's just slide a few cards into the front to really complete that look. There we have it, finished mini Centurion case next to the real deal, and I am extremely happy with how this turned out. I am not a woodworking guy, so there was a, a lot of uh, experimentation and figuring things out that went into this, and well, I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Now, it's not perfect, obviously. Uh, it's all made of wood, whereas a lot of this is made of metal, so in the future, if we wanna get more accurate to the real deal, I gotta make some very fundamental changes. Uh, I should probably actually just build it around a proper 19 inch rack. And if I get to the point where I wanna rebuild this and make these filler panels out of metal and make this out of metal, I'm gonna do that. Uh, also, I'm not totally sold on whether the uh, width of these panels, whether I like it better being skinnier like this or being fatter like this. I like how compact this system is, compact being a relative term here because it's still huge, uh, but I like how compact the shorter sides here make it. And I think with it being so short vertically, if these were any wider, it might look a little funky. And talking about these, well, you can see that I got the color completely wrong. So I'm gonna have to do some rework on that anyways. It's way too red compared to the more muted brown that's on the original system. And actually, that's a good question for any uh, woodworking people out there. If you like to woodwork, this is just a stain. How do I fix the color on this? Do I have to sand it all the way back to bare wood? Or uh, can I just give it a rough sanding and put a different stain on top of it to shift the color to a more muted brown? I don't know, this is kind of new territory for me. But for now, I am really happy with how this turned out. And proportion-wise, interestingly, it's really not that different from the very early CPU-4 systems that Centurion themselves were building. The early CPU-4 systems were a one Hawk drive system. And proportion-wise, it's pretty close to this. As a matter of fact, if I expanded out this section here in the center where the uh, floppy drive is, if I brought it up just a little bit higher to the same height as a Hawk drive, vertically, it would be almost identical to those original CPU-4 systems. Uh, now, as I said, our horizontal width would change a little bit. I might need to go wider on these. And now the system is getting bigger and heavier and it's not quite as portable. Uh, also, this entire thing is much, much shallower. The original machine here and the original CPU 4 machines had to be very deep because the Hawk drive is very deep. Uh, also, they were stuffing an entire ferro resonant power supply underneath there as well, which we're not gonna do, which 
actually leads me into what we still have to do. It looks like it's complete, but it's not even close. There is no power or wires or anything in there. It's just parts sitting in there. So we have a ton of wiring up to do. And I'm not gonna use a ferro resonant power supply. I'm gonna use a bunch of modern meanwhile supplies. Then we have a bunch of ribbon cables that we need to run. We've got two ribbon cables that go from the LED panel up here down to the back plane and the CPU six. And then we have, uh, well, it's not in there right now, the FFC card will go in there, which will have a ribbon cable from it up to the uh, floppy drive. It'll also have a DMA cable that goes from it to the CPU six card. And then we have a cable that's gonna come out of our MUX card, run underneath and go over to a terminal. And the terminal that I'm gonna use with this is the terminal that is currently sitting on top of the counterfeit system. So we still have a ton of work to do just building the thing. Once we get it built, then we have to get the operating system onto it, which is a whole other difficult battle. So we've been, absolutely going insane trying to min-max our operating system down to a more reasonable size. And I think we've got something really special going on with that. Rin has been a massive help. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you hang around for the next episode because we're gonna wire this thing up, we're gonna get it hooked up to the terminal, we're going to power it on, and we're going to put a custom operating install on a floppy. That's gonna be an exciting episode. So thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you then.